work now. So, uh, let's start with, uh, with a simple example. So, you all know, it's very evident that we are full, that the web is full of data. Most of them are useful, some of them are useful, most of them are unuseful for us. But we are full of uh, government data, health-related data, something about any kind of knowledge, information about companies, information about the, for organizing travels, flights, hotels, restaurants, everything. So this is very evident. What maybe is not equally evident is that uh, there are more and more website applications that rely on existing data. So uh, I, I found this example that I liked. This is, uh, this is taken from the BBC website, which has uh, an area for music and artists. And they say that uh, um, the web pages for all BBC music radio shows, for example, include track list for each episode. Each song has a link to the corresponding artist page on the BBC music website, which is seen here. Uh, the information on all the artist pages is taken from Music Brains, the world's largest public domain music database. So there is a, there exists a database, I don't know if you heard of it, that called Music Brains, that records most, many, many, lots of information about artists and what they've done and their bio and everything about artists. The important news for independent artists, so the people that are not that famous, is that you don't already, if you don't have already an artist profile on Music Brains, next time you are played on a BBC radio, the track list will either point to an empty artist page or, worse still, may not point at anything at all. So they are saying that if you are an artist not that known and if we play your music on our site as a radio, if you are not entered your information on a database of artists, you will have, when people want more information about you, you will click about on your name and will find nothing, or an unknown artist, which is worse. This is uh, evident here that um, they use something automatic to extract information from an existing database. So they are not going to put information on the artist directly on the site, but they are using data coming from something else. And this is more and more frequent. Not that much now, but it's more and more frequent. So if you are a BBC, so a, a huge organization, and uh, you want uh, uh, to build a music site, this is uh, a screenshot of, of the BBC music site, uh, what do site, what usually site editors uh, did or do now? They look for facts. Uh, they gather information from other sites, uh, Crawling, man, maybe manually looking for other music sites and try to update the site manually. So uh, imagine that this Ed Sheeran is going to have a tournée somewhere and they have to update manually the dates of the tournée. It takes a lot of time and it very, very soon gets out of date. So it's not very frequent that uh, it is not sustainable, this, uh, this approach. What could they do? A little bit better is that they write programs, they write, pro write code to, to crawl the web and incorporate new data. So this is done more manually and uh, more automatically, not completely manually. So there is, instead of a person that looks for information on artists, there is a program. Hmm? But the problem is that uh, every time you have to run the program and find updated information. So. It's, a it's better because it's not done manually, but it's not yet the best. More, a little bit more, let's say, technological, instead of writing a problem, you can use uh, uh, search data via API. But again, you have to understand the format of this data and write code to incorporate the new data. So again, if you don't run this program frequently or you don't, adapt to the change in the data format of other databases, again, you are out of date very soon. So the solution found of this uh, by the BBC, this 
this huge organization is to use external public data sets. So data are already available, for example, on Wikipedia, which is a database behind that is called DBpedia that uh, uh, is, um, let's say, in, in a DB in, in a format in triplets that, uh, that we will see soon, uh, that has a uh, lot of information taken from Wikipedia. Music Brains, uh, brains is uh, about artists and music in, uh, music in general. And there are many, many of them. We will talk them uh, more in detail because we have uh, a part of the course on data, uh, on data link, in linked data. And this has to do with public data sets that are available for query. So this uh, information are available as data. So they are written in a sort of a database. So they are uh, easily accessed with the right tools. So they are already there for querying using the appropriate tool. And uh, they can be extracted using HTTP requests or standard queries. The, the language that we will use for that is called uh, SparkQL hmm, and allows you to make queries on this distributed and public external data set. So the idea is that uh, you are using the web of data as a content management system. So you're writing your site using data that someone else is going to edit. And therefore, when a large community is, is, a, is a community of content editors, it's very likely that the content are very, up, very well updated, updated frequently. And you don't have even to look for this data, but you simply run queries on existing data that someone else is going to, uh, to update. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, let's say, uh, a big uh, change in how the, the, the site was done uh, many, many, many years ago. And uh, to, do in the, to do that, um, you need an infrastructure, of course. An infrastructure for what is called the web of data. Now, the semantic web, the W3C, which is the one that invented the semantic web and the web, is, uh, calls the semantic web the web of data, or even better, the web of linked data. So the idea is to have lots of public uh, data sets that we are able to query, and then we extract information, and maybe you add extra information reasoning on the fact that we have already discovered. Mm -hmm. The data are available on the web and they are accessible via standard web technologies. So the traditional web technology has to be extended in order to be able for the application to query the data that exists already. Mm -hmm. Data are interlinked on the web. The important is that the data are not simple uh, standing data, but there are connections among the data, among the data. Mm. The semantic web technology has this role, allow you to find information on the web in a form of data and to connect them in different ways in order to do your the application you're interested in. Mm. So the definition by W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, uh, is that the semantic web, the, the definition five years ago was very different, but uh, now the definition, they say this is taken from the, the website. Uh, the, the semantic web is a web of linked data. So we are talking about data that have connect, connection among them. Uh, data can be anything, can be dates, can be titles, can be music artists, can be uh, events, uh, can be numbers, can be chemical properties, anything that we can think of. Person, animals, plants, everything, okay? So the, the ultimate goal of the web of data is enable computers to do more useful work and develop system that can support trust in trusted interaction over the network. So uh, built uh, application that are able to be, let's say, more intelligent in, and they have to, um, to exploit the data, existing data and the interaction between existing data. 
this trust that is something that the web, semantic web has in mind since uh, the beginning. Um, we will see the, the, the classic stack, but it's the part that's it's not yet uh, completely developed. The web information must be machine readable. That's, tr that's, the, the, that's the point. Mm -hmm. And the semantic web technologies enable people to create data stores on the web. So what is important is that people that have their site, their information, their data, open their data to the rest of the world, ma maintaining some data sets in a format that has been uh, identified by the semantic web, which is RDF, uh, in order that other people could use this data for writing interesting application and for merging their data to their one. Hmm? This is the, 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 the idea. So it's important to write application that use data, but people should provide data for the world to be used. So, so the web, uh, the traditional web, uh, is uh, something about documents. We said the resources can be anything, it can any kind of media. But the idea is that uh, the links between the resources are flat. They have no semantics. Simply, you can say that this resource uh, is linked to this one for some reason that here is not evident. So we are used to this, uh, this document. So all the, the semantics of a link uh, is uh, from the author that has to write something meaningful in the, in the tag that identifies a link uh, in, uh, in the, on the web page, okay? So everything is flat. The idea of the semantic web is that we can say a uh, statement about things. Our, uh, the focus of the data is that they are not only web pages, but they can be everything. Can be uh, an atom, can be a cell, can be a, uh, a chemical property, can be a plant, can be an animal, can be me, you, or whatever, or whatever you think, okay? So you can say, uh, and you add semantics, uh, you, you can say things, uh, say everything about things, about everything that exists or not exists in the world. So you can say that this Jane Doe hmm, has a phone number, and this is a phone number. So you can see this, that there are very different kind of data. There are telephone numbers, there are email address, uh, there are coordinates, uh, they are postcode, uh, they are documents, uh, they are web pages uh, and everything. And you can say that this Jane Doe is, has a phone number, which is this one, and an email, which is this one. And she's going to attend a pool meeting and uh, is going also to chair this meeting. And uh, this meeting has a known page, in which uh, probably there is uh, what they are going to discuss, discuss today. Use a, pri use a policy that, that is privacy rules, is located in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which has this postal code and has this uh, geographical coordinates. So here you link data that are not homogeneous and you give a semantic on, this, um, on the links between these objects. This, uh, the semantics here, I, make you notice something that has a name, location, and a prefix, this G column. That means that location could be an ambiguous term. I mean, location is the way you identify something that is located, some, the place where something is located. But uh, different people could use location for different purposes. And uh, so, uh, it's sort of, uh, the, this prefix identified a sort of vocabulary that be, uh, for which this, uh, this uh, string belongs. So this means the location of the vocabulary that is called G. This uh, allows other people to use location in another ter for another reason with another prefix. Mm -hmm. We will go into this uh, later. Uh, Please note that this is just a curiosity. This is, uh, 
This is something that um, Tim Berners-Lee published in 18, 1989 about the original concept of the web. The original concept of the web is not different on what we have seen here. That means here, is talking, you see that all the, the nodes have different uh, forms because they represent different things. They can represent documents or, um, or um, concepts uh, or actions or, and so on. And also the links have a semantics on it. Hmm? So uh, a proposal mesh describes uh, CERN which is a taxonomy, mm? and so on. So the original idea of the people that uh, at the beginning developed the web was to write a semantic web. Then it was too difficult, and they concentrated on something that was much more simpler, much simpler, and uh, that could um, give very good immediate results. So the web became uh, a way in which people could uh, exchange uh, research data, research documents, and so on. Mm? But the original is already this one. So what is the semantic web? Uh, it's a collection of technologies to realize a web of data. So all the technologies you need to, to implement the vision that uh, the semantic web needs. So, it looks very si simple, but there are a lot of problems in that. Here are some, some of, the, of the technologies that uh, are involved mm, with, the, with the logo, the official logo of W3C. Uh, so, the first, the first step is that all the applications should have a common model uh, because otherwise they are not going to exchange da data. Mm. So the first step is to write a way in which writing this, let's say, these networks, to express these networks. Mm -hmm. And then there is the problem of classification of terms because people that are talking that in the web speak different languages but also have cultural differences and this reflects on the, on the terminology that everybody uses. So, uh, there is uh, the, the re knowledge representation has a has a, an important uh, role in uh, in a semantic web. Ontologists, uh, uh, thesauri, uh, taxonomists, and uh, and so on. So uh, the number of technologies involved in the semantic web is huge. It's, there are many many different languages or technologies. Some are for knowledge representation, some are for uh, describing models, others are for uh, um, describing ontologies, reasoning about ontologies, for making queries, and so on. Not every application use everything, okay? Just a, a note on the logo. This is the official logo of the semantic web. Uh, they, this uh, this uh, cube has three colors because it reminds uh, that uh, the core of the semantic web is this RDF model, which is based on triplets. So triplets are uh, statements that have three components, the subject, the predicate, and the object. I, I live in Torino. This is a, a simple statement, which is a subject, me, and uh, an object, Torino, live, object in the sense, not. Uh, Grammatical, but and uh, an action that uh, or um, a verb that means live. Okay, so it makes um, very evident this model is the kernel of the semantic web, and the fact that this this um, cube is a box and the box is open means that it's an invitation to open your data to the semantic web. This is the reason of uh, the logo changed uh, quite recently, and I want to stress these two very uh, core concepts. Mm. So let's see quickly the step, uh, the, the stack of the components of the semantic web. We have uh, essentially a number, we have, a, there are not every technologies here. Mm. 
but here there are the, the most important ones, the most relevant ones. We will see other, uh, another stack which uh, the fun is better. But the interesting thing here is that is the role that this technology has in building uh, semantic web application with our, of course, our own top. So we have some technologies that are used for representing knowledge. That means uh, everything is based on knowledge representation. To have these data sets, we have to be able to extract this data from existing uh, websites, for example, from existing relational model databases and write them in a data interchange format, which is RDF, in a meaningful way. So there are lots of, there is technologies that are, that goes up to writing these data sets to make them available to everybody. Then there are technologies that use these data sets and using more, um, ontologies or other ways of uh, more sophisticated way of representing knowledge, reason and extract new information on what is existing. Uh, very stupid example, I say I live in Torino, as someone else, uh, but you, there is written that Torino is in uh, Italy, Italy is in Europe and so on, so I live in Europe. So, but this is very, very stupid example, but reasonings, uh, is something that you extract new knowledge from something that is already existing. But even though you are, even if you are not interested in adding new knowledge, you can, let's say, be content of querying all the available data and merging available data in order to discover something new in a simpler and maybe less sophisticated way, but with very good results. The other part, trust, that is based on cryptography and there are other components, uh, is not equally developed and we are not going to, to talk about it in this course. It has to do with the fact that since uh, all information is based on relationship uh, and the, also the problem is to associate a degree of trust of information. That means this is something that we are talking a lot in politics uh, today in Italy. I mean, the, the web, uh, is, there's lots of information, which information is uh, good, uh, I mean, true, and what is false. Mm -hmm. So associate a degree of trust to information. That of course is made of a well-known technology that is cryptography, but there are other components that are more sophisticated. Uh, and then there is the interaction part, which is writing application that are based on, uh, on all these technologies. Uh, well, we don't have yet standard, I mean, there are solu solution of trust, but they are not standardized yet. Uh, just uh, um, a note, uh, at the beginning, the semantic web was more on the direction of, of technology for reasoning. Then at some point, uh, uh, shift a little bit on this idea of SparQL and linked data because it's less complex uh, and gives uh, for many applications very good results. So we will talk specifically also of the web of linked data which essentially use RDF and uh, this language SparQL for writing uh, queries that works on data sets and not on the, the usual uh, relational model databases. So. so, semantic web is a set of technology, com a common set of technologies because uh, that could uh, use uh, used in a different way, in an interoperable way. It's a coherent sort of technology, so each technology speaks to the other one, they, they can exchange it. Uh, information, they have um, been designed to, to be used by other technologies, so they are coherent. Uh, they provide a substantial base of innovation, to, so they, it's important to write innovative uh, uh, application with them. And uh, 
standard in sense that uh, they aim to reduce uh, proprietary vendor lock-in, so it's open solution that everybody could use, uh, and so they they want to encourage the use of uh, standard uh, uh, technologies and open data sets. Hmm. The semantic solution, what are semantic solutions? We can see, well, very generally, three levels, mm, which share the, the classical three levels. Of course, there are the application. The application use data. The data are linked data, so we have things and connection between things. And we extract information, uh, querying or manipulating the reasoning about this uh, model of representing knowledge. Behind, on the back, there are the data that are in, uh, in many, many different uh, uh, kind of formats. Can be HTML pages, can be other kind of documents, can be uh, relational databases, other kind of databases. And there are different technologies that help you to mm, convert the data in various, in, in, most of the formats, in many formats, into this RDF model, into this uh, common model. So technologies are for uh, converting existing data into uh, useful data representation and then to query, manipulate and reason on this data to, uh, to obtain application. Mm. This is uh, I like this picture because it separates a little bit between what are the concepts and what are the technology, what is the technology, because it's a 3D representation uh, of the same stack. So, well, of course, we have a base that is the classical web platform, so it's based on HTTP, URI, um, authentication, and so on, so this is the usual web platform. and then. We have a lot of formats that allow to uh, take data taken from the web in a different format and convert it in this uh, information exchange model, which is RDF. These are some XML provide uh, syntax for many of the other languages. Turtle is a way of representing um, triplets, so these statements about things. And then RDFA and microformats are used to convert uh, pages and documents into RDF. So uh, then we have SparkQL that allows you to make queries. And SparkQL doesn't need much than RDF, or even not really RDF, but at least some of these formats, for example, Tarpo. And then we have the, the, the models, the, the more sophisticated models that use um, tax, uh, taxonomies, thesauri, like SCOS, or uh, ontologies, like OWL, mm? and uh, rules that allow it to reason on this model. The logic means that you write uh, programs using this, uh, these tools, and then there is uh, the proof. So uh, this is a very complex stack. Most of the um, application don't use everything, but can use uh, so only a part of these technologies. Specifically, linked data uh, use uh, practically only the formats, uh, some RDF and, uh, and SparkQL. So, just just to so the first uh, the first step that uh, I would like to do today. Uh, is uh, talking a little bit more about the represent the first step that is representation of uh, of the of the knowledge. So the semantic web enables machines to comprehend semantic documents and data. This is uh, the basis, but uh, does not intend to do any uh, comprehension of natural language. So not human speech, not human writing. So the natural language processing is somewhere else, it's too complex. Mm. And so, the semantic foundation are metadata. 
I like this uh, this comic and uh, this this man that uh, writes uh, every object or animal or whatever is in around him with a name. So it's attaching metadata with uh, the painting to to things, but it's not that far from what application have to do. That is attach meaning to everything that is on the web. Mm? Attach a sort of a label. So this is a dog. This is a cat. This is a shirt, pant, the tree, and so on. So uh, the metadata are a semantic web foundation at very low level. So if you have a resource, let's say any kind of resource, could be a document, but could be a video or whatever, uh, you can describe it in some way. For example, you can say that the title of, of this uh, this resource that is my presentation together. Let's say this is the video that uh, I will hopefully produce from this uh, today will be a multimedia object that has uh, slides and uh, audio. And I say that the title of this resource is Introduction to the Semantic Web. I can say also that the author of this resource is myself and uh, I think that the resource is suitable for PhD students, has been written for, for you, and was created uh, a few days ago. It's not true, it was 15, but anyway, <laughs> even more recently, let's say, but uh, has been as a, as a date inside. And uh, I say that uh, the resource has to do with computer science, knowledge, representation, metadata, a list of keywords, okay? So what are resources? Resources are everything you can find on the web. In reality, we are moving on and everything that exists in some way. I am a resource in terms of semantic web because I can make reasoning about myself and I can make statements about myself and I'm not uh, on the web, not, not physically on the web, okay? But anyway, a resource has a content as an, a, a format, and the access method depends on the format. So uh, if it's a web document, I have a, you, I have a Word document, I have to Word or some other word processor to open it, and so on. If it's a, a video, I have to use a video tool to, to look at it. So uh, standardizing, the format is almost impossible because there are hundreds of uh, different uh, human languages and hundreds of different computer languages or formats. So that's not even worth to try to do some standardization on, on the resource. But I can add some resource description which I can say that is independent of the format. I can write a, nota a notation uh, close to a video or an audio or, uh, or a document. Of course, I have to know the language in which the comment is written, otherwise I'm, I'm, I'm at the beginning. If I write in, in Italian and uh, you are German, maybe you don't understand me. But if we agree that we all write in English, that's okay. Here, standardization, so finding a common language for um, for description is feasible because I only, in, in some way I'm starting from scratch. I, I have uh, the way to decide that all annotation has to be done in a given language. It's easier because the annotation are more recent in the web than uh, the idea, than, than the documents. So the, the solution is, um, so we, we are talking about a smaller amount of information and possibly new uh, people are uh, encouraged to comment the resource they put on the web if they are no resource. And um, the idea is to f define a standard language for writing comments that are the metadata in the semantic web technology. I didn't tell you, but can you understand myself, me, when, when I'm talking? I mean, just. Uh, I'm talking too fast, no, or no, no. Italian English, to Italian, but anyway. 
No, if you, he, uh, by the way, I didn't, uh, but of course, if you want to ask something or don't understand or you want to interrupt me, you are welcome, okay? So, we, we concentrate on descriptions and not on, on the documents. And these are the metadata. Metadata are these comments, but of course, if you want to make them machine readable, we have to find a language in which we have to represent these comments that are not the natural language. And then, of course, we have to say that this metadata will be uh, something equal something else, in which on the left we have a field name, a category of things that we want to say about our source, and on the other side there is the value, so what we are going to, to talk to what we say about the resource. So this practically are the metadata. And uh, for example, in our case, I can say that title is, uh, is, the, is the field, the uh, introduction to the semantic web is the value, author or audience, uh, PhD student, equal PhD student, the topic is a list of uh, arguments, uh, and the date is that one that is. So, I can at least start to with this. But to make them meaningful, this annotation, I have to solve uh, at least four different problems. The first problem is to have a common language for describing resources, okay? So that title equals introduction to semantic web is written in the same way I write it as the same way that everybody else on the net writes. And uh, maybe the equal is not the best solution. Okay, so we have to, f and so I have to find a standard language for describing resources. Then I have to find a common language for describing the left part. So the field name, quarter, title, P audience, and so on. And it has to do with metadata standards. Then I have to find a way to describe the right part. I still have problems to distinguish left and right. And uh, these field values um, it means that uh, have to be a meaningful <coughs> format for these field values. Because again, the metadata standards can help partially, but there are more. Uh, we need uh, other tools, for example, controlled vocabularies. But then, if we want to support reasoning and not only querying, we have to find a probably better way for representing knowledge, for example, ontologies. So this is just uh, an overview. But uh, let's start for the first problem. Common language for describing resources. Uh, this common language exists, uh, it is called RDF. At least, RDF is not a language, it's a model. It's a way in which we want to represent uh, uh, statements. Uh, the statement is a triple, triple, which has a subject, a predicate, and an object, in which the subject is a resource, is something that you can talk about, a thing, things, me, you, a cat, uh, a book, everything. Uh, a predicate is a verb or a property or a relationship. And the object is another resource or something literal, a cost, constant. I live in Torino. Torino is not, uh, is, is a literal because it's the name of a town. Hmm? So uh, RDF, which is here, is a tri the, the tri uh, the, the, let's say this is a tri triple, uh, is a data model. Say, I want to represent everything, every data, writing statements that are triplets. Then, RDF has several different syntaxes, way of writing in a, let's say, in a machine readable way. Let's say, I switch here after. Uh, you can easily, is the best way to describe, um, I mean, to show you uh, a relationship, a triplet, is to use a diagram. It says that 
this URI, this document, let's say this presentation, as author Laura Farinetti. Okay, so uh, this is uh, me, this is uh, I'm a URI, uh, this is a document, and this is a verb as author. Okay, I can describe it very, very easily with a diagram. But of course, the diagram is not machine readable, so we have to find out a syntax uh, to write uh, this, uh, this, to write a statement. And uh, RDF has several syntaxes, so one is turtle, one is entry, and also XML is one of them. So if you use a, uh, XML as, R, 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 um, as a, the language, you call it RDF slash XML. So XML, not necessary for doing semantic web, but it's one of the syntax for writing RDF statement. By the way, it's the preferred by Rabbit uh, Swift. So XML is a syntax, RDF is a data model. Um, then I can go back here. This is an example. This is triple, this is a triple syntax. The triple has, uh, of course, three parts. The first is the verb, the predicate. The second is the subject. The third is the object. Of course, these links are oriented, the, the, the oriented the, because they go from the subject to the object. So this is a way of expressing this diagram in a non, um, in, in a, let's say, non-ambiguous way. Uh, in XML syntax, XML is very verbose. So to write something very short, you write something very long. And uh, so this is the namespace of RDF, that means the vocabulary that uh, the RDF use. Uh, it says I'm descri the descri description about, this is the URI, the subject. I, the verb, the predicate becomes a tag name and the object is the text inside the tag name then I close the description. It's just an alternative and more verbose uh, uh, way of expressing this data model. Mm. Just a, a little parenthesis on URIs. URIs um, is uh, everything that I can represent uh, and talk about. URIs are uh, the classical URL which we were used uh, to many years ago. Um, URL is what you were you, you used to write on the on the on the browser window and identify a resource. Uh, but all besides identifying a web resource, specify the specifies the, the way in which you can access the resource using HTTP. HTTPS, uh, FTP, what is the protocol that you use to identify it, and then also the address where you find it, the web server name and then the path inside the web server and so on. So it's called L because it's also a locator. So gives you um, where to find, uh, it's concentrated on where to find a resource. URN is a sort of a, um, resource by the name in a particular na namespace. It's sort of, a, you say, entry number four of a vocabulary. So it gives a, a unique ID to a resource without uh, specifying where it is. Hmm? I can say that my, I am a name, I have a unique ID, that is my social security number, but if I talk about me, you are don't know what, you're not interested in my location because my location change, okay? URI are the sum of them, and they, are, they intersect because they are a specific way of uh, writing URI in which you specify both a unique ID and where it is, and a location. So, uh, in this way, the URI provide a way for identifying everything that you can talk about. This was this, the idea. And then once you know what you're talking about, you can write sentences uh, about uh, uh, what you want. Mm? And so for example, this command 
can you written with this diagram or this triple statement or this uh, RDF XML uh, statement? Just this is an example just to understand what you can do and why. You will see the syntax of RDF uh, and something more, RDFF, I think, next, uh, next time with Fulvio. But just I want to make you, they give you an idea of why um, is interesting, a common data model is interesting. It's made, this is uh, a graph that can be easily represented by, with the RDF model because each of these uh, couple of things connected by a link can be, can, are a statement. I can say that this URI uh, has a title as a predicate and the glass palace is the object. So this, uh, this ISBN, this specific book, uh, uh, has the title the glass palace, has been pub as the, the year is 2000. Uh, is, uh, the publisher as, uh, is based in London and is called Harper Collins. So these are data taken from uh, a database that could be converted in RDF. That I have, and says that uh, the author has, is called uh, Golshamital and his own page is this one. So with this, I can make queries, but they are the same queries I could do. Uh, to the database in which the things uh, were originally present. So there's nothing much better. So I know something about a book. Let's imagine that we have, and there is this, a way for transforming uh, a relational database into a set, a data set of RDF statements, which I represent in this way. So I can make the same queries with a different language that I can do with the original database. But imagine that I have another database somewhere else in which is written someone else, made by someone else. For example, a French-speaking uh, person. And it's talking, saying something about the same book I have here. And it says that the origin of this book that has been translated in French. And this is the IBS in the French, is the French version which has uh, his own ISBN. And, uh, the re and it's written here, I mean, the original title for this book is this one. I, it's also added the author, in French, auteur. Uh, the name is this one, Amitash Tapgosh, which is already, by the way, it's written in a slightly different way than in the other case. And also the name that is put on the link is different, is in French, auteur and not an author in English. But the title of this book, of course, is different because of the French translation, the Palais de the Miroir. And, and then there is extra information, uh, traducteur, which is the translator of the book, which is uh, this, uh, this girl, okay? Here I can make other queries, different queries, with the same that I could do with the second original database if I put them together, I can see that they are talking about the same thing. The ISBN is an example of a URN, is a name, is something that identifies uh, a book uh, in a univoc way. We are talking about one book. We don't know where it is because it's not a locator, but it's identified. So we can notice that this one and this one are the same. So the first step we can do is to merge them. I identify they are two URIs, they are the same, so it's the same thing. So I can merge them. Hmm? I merge them in this way, okay? This is just simply merging the same uh, node. Hmm? And uh, here, already, I can make better queries. For example, I can ask, are there into the other translation of this book, in case which is the translator of the French version of this book, or what is the original publisher of the to what is the publisher of the original book for which uh, Le Palais de Miroir has been uh, is a translation? So I can add uh, information for my query. 
Remind that I didn't write a thing about this data. I'm taking, da I'm taking, I'm using data uh, that has been written by someone else, but I can make better queries, more interesting ones. At some point, I can also notice that there are something that probably is repeated because it's just we are using a different namespace, a different vocabulary, and this author is probably the same author as here. I can try to to do some, try to better merge this information. Mm -hmm. And so I can say, okay, this link uh, in reality is only one because I can merge not only the notes, but also the links. It can find it. Here, I am using extra knowledge, something that used probably other involves some reasoning or at least some other tool because that's obvious that what uh, the person that used the author as the same thing, the same thing in mind as the other person that used author. There should be written somewhere that author and author means the same thing. It is written separately. I can use this extra information. If I add this extra information, I can merge even better this, uh, this two, these two original graphs. And then I can, for example, add extra information. For example, that both the translation, the translator and the author belong to another class, to a common class that is person. Okay? This is something that I've done using ontologies, probably. Hmm? Something that makes a more complex uh, um, use of net knowledge. But I can do that with, uh, with the tool that Santa w that Semantic Web uh, make my uh, disposal, okay? And here I, I can reason on that and uh, find a better representation uh, of the knowledge. Um, and here there is this fourth friend of a friend um, format. It means that uh, I'm talking a vocabulary that is the one of the friend of a friend that uh, especially uh, written for identifying relationship between persons, for example. Uh, yes. Again, I can do even more. For example, combine different data sets. For example, I think that probably this author is on Wikipedia, very likely is on Wikipedia. If it's in Wikipedia, behind Wikipedia there is this large data set that is DBpedia. And DBpedia has uh, information about all people that are in Wikipedia. So I can say that uh, this person, Gosh Amitra, that's a cat, no? <laughs> Looks like there is a cat in the room. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, uh, this uh, this person has uh, as an entry in Wikipedia, which is this one, okay? And most probably there are other entries about also the books because it's uh, it's something that is in Wikipedia, the Glass Palace, and so I can link. Uh, saying that uh, this resource that is in Wikipedia has this ISBN and I can link the fact or I can already in Wikipedia there's not only the pages let's say the triplets but also the fact that uh, this one is uh, the author of that book but I can also add that this author has written other two books these two and I can and I, from Wikipedia if I extract what I'm interested, I also know where it was born, which is was born here, Kolkata. And then I also can, uh, can say what are the coordinates, latitude and longitude in this place. So I'm adding different data sets and I'm doing, I can make more and more interesting queries. For example, where, where are the person that has read that, uh, the original writer of the book uh, Le Palais de Miroir was born and I can uh, answer to this question. So the idea is to build, this is the idea of the web of links data. 
and uh, other people. People write information, expose them in a common format, and all applications can use them by using standard methods to access them, and, and so on. Okay. Then I could do even more power, for example, I could, uh, let's say, we're talking about books, then why not add in the information on how books are catalogued by subject, and so on. I can add uh, ontology, extra rules, uh, and more and more powerful queries can be added. Okay? I, I just wanted to make this example to make clear wh 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 where are we going. Mm? And we are going to see all these steps uh, and the most important technologies that allow you to, to do these steps. Mm -hmm. So what is the syntax for RDS? What is the syntax for writing ontologies uh, in a machine readable way? What are the syntax for doing queries and so on? I'm talking about. Okay. So I I had a long introduction on what the, was the problem of having a common format for representing connections. And uh, now it's, uh, this is a little bit easier. Uh, the, other, the second problem was to find a common language for the field names. Uh, the field names are what you see on the links uh, on the RDF diagram to say this author, author, birth, uh, date, uh, and so on. So the problem is that I call it author, but someone else could make it, call it creator, maker, or contributor. Um, for title is quite clear, but when I say date, could be I, maybe I, I I need to add. Uh, extra information, more details, because the date could be the creation date or the last modification date or the revision date or whatever. So I must be, be more specific. When I say audience, uh, I could have said, someone else could call it education level or destination or suitability. So I have to find a, better, a, a very clear way to define what I am uh, talking about. When I go to the topic, it's even worse because uh, I can have singular, plural, and well, but with STEM it's not that difficult, but also people, when talking about topics uh, in a very specific way, is, uh, is very, can be, can be different, okay? The solution are yeah, metadata standards. So, uh, many standardization bodies are involved in this attempt to give a very specific and precise uh, name for each of the of this, uh, let's say, uh, stand semantic link between uh, between objects. So there are some standards are very general. I just mention one that is Dublin Core that says very very it's here that says that as things that very, very, uh, they can apply to any resource, uh, but they are very general, they go into detail. A any resource as a title, as a creator, as a subject, as a description, and so on, as a source, as a language, and so on. As a relation to other objects that can be, as version is replaced, replaces, is required. So it's uh, quite compact, even though it's not that small, but it's uh, suitable for any kind of resources, but doesn't go into detail of the specific type of the resources. So different um, standardization bodies propose the different uh, metadata that has specific uh, domain, for example, education or multimedia resources, Im images, uh, geospatial resources, bibliographical or cultural heritage resources. So there are hundreds of them, and one of the problems is to merge and use the correct one, okay? And uh, so we use, to, to find this, let's say, these names, this field name, we have to select one metadata standard or a set of metadata standards that practically are then the namespaces that uh, we were mentioned before. 
the metadata set is the namespace. The name of the, um, the link uh, is the entry in the metadata uh, standard. Okay, so let's suppose that we are only using standard type, standard left side. Now the problem is to find good values on the right side. So, for example, when you have a title, well, the only thing you can say is that it's a string and everybody can say what, what uh, at, least at maximum you can say expressly which language is written and what the, the, the international string is, which is better. When he's talking about the date, uh, well, the, there is a, the, the database format of date is very suitable and there's no problem. But sometimes you talk to an author, so when an author is, the string is not the better choice because you have to better to distinguish the name from the family name and so on, so problems. Uh, when I say it was not in the original, but maybe they say that the quality is high, what, what is the, the scale, the range of values that I want to say for quality? Could be strings, high, medium, low, um, could be a number, could be a value, that's, it's okay. So um, the problem is that if you restrict the values, they are more clear, but at the same time you are less flexible. So there, there is sort of balance of what you want to use. Um, when I say the, the audience, you want one name to name to, to different audience at least. And when you talk about topics, it's even worse because uh, different people write different words for the same things or vice versa. So you need to have a vocabulary, a common vocabulary. So what you can do, the solution is used partially not, uh, not most metadata standards has already some uh, suggestion on why on how to write the values mm -hmm. and uh, but also to use control vocabulary so better way for representing subject based uh, knowledge uh, just an example this is another metadata standard which is called LOM learning object model uh, that uh, is used to, uh, for educational resources, in which you say, um, for example, this source, uh, this resources in which format, uh, or what uh, uh, the privacy right or the educational level, and so on. This is the overview of all the metadata, but for each of them, there is uh, a do the document specify what you have to write on the, right, on, the, on the right side. For example, when you talk about contribution, you, a contribution is made by three information, three, three data, um, the role, so what kind of contribution are you talking about, who's the person that is doing the contribution, and when uh, this contribution has been done. So for the date, okay, the data type is written, is data time. The entity is suggested using the VCARD uh, standard that says to express uh, already defined. And about the role, there is the, val the, there is the value space. It's written, a contribution can be by an author, by a publisher, can be unknown, can be initiator, terminator, validator, editor, graphic designer, and so on. So it's already, there is also, a, there is already a vocabulary of things that you can say on the left, on the right side of the statement, on the object of the, of the, uh, on the, on the statement that means the, okay? So, but, Sometimes it's not sufficient. For example, uh, if you want to say what this resource is, talk is talking about, uh, it's better that there's a fixed number of values that you can use. For example, uh, you can say that computer science is better, writing computer science is better than writing informatics, which are synonyms, and so on. So the problem here is to identify some way 
of subject doing some subject based classification subject based classification is not is not, is not to do with metadata fields because the metadata fields describe what you are, what you are saying about the resource you are saying that is the author they say the date you are saying that this is talks about the subject based classification is used to classify the value according to given uh, knowledge uh, setting, knowledge um, domain. So uh, the metadata describes the object, and subject based classification is what you write inside this description. And uh, well, this is something very nice, but uh, this uh, the book of Borges, in which he uh, imagine that he found in a Chinese book this interesting classification of animals, in which this uh, classification of animals are those that belong to the emperor and banned ones, those that are trained, suckling pigs, mermaids, <coughs> fabulous ones, uh, stray dogs, those included in the present classification, those that tremble as, as, as if they were mad, innumerable ones, those drawn with a very fi fine camel hair brush, others, those that have just broken a flower vase, those that from a long way off look like flies. I like the last one. So, this is just a nice example. Well, Morgan says always that it's very difficult, it's impossible to try to categorize knowledge because we don't know when the universe is to, to, to it's, it's impossible to classify something that is in the universe. But anyway, uh, classifying, cl to classify, classify something about this, uh, this uh, knowledge, that about what is talking about, it is very, very difficult anyway. So um, these are different um, subject-based classification, m m uh, let's say, methods. And then forget about this one. There are some of the technologies. But, uh, we have taxonomies. We have thesauri. We have control vocabularies. We have ontologies, which are, let's say, uh, in which the semantics is uh, better, let's say, more rich, richer and richer. And uh, the cost that you have to take into account when you write uh, ontologies with respect to control vocabularies. Uh, very, very quickly, uh, a controlled vocabulary is something that um, has a practically a list of terms or pick list. So you have the classical menu, he will select one of the names that are already written. This at least prevents uh, the author from misspelling and from defining terms that are meaningless or too broad or too nar narrow. So you define what are the, the terms that you want to use and the author, I mean the, the, the people that make the metadata, uh, have to select only one value that is already existing. So, uh, reduces ambiguity inherent to human, in normal human language, so you can write only computer science and not informatics, for example. Uh, solve problems of uh, uh, synonyms, polysemes, uh, homographs, homonyms. Uh, homographs are the words that are written in the same way, but have a different meaning. Homonyms uh, are words that have the same meaning, but they are written in a different way, and, and so on. Polysim, so it means that different, the same word means different things, but they are very similar. Like, for example, wood is an area um, full of tree, or wood is also the, the wood, what the material. Uh, okay, um, and say in a controlled vocabulary is term means a uh, very precise meaning. Are these constraints only on the metadata or also on the data itself? 
uh, I mean, these are suggestions to be applied on uh, on the field of the meta on the on the left file. It doesn't mean that you have to. That means that you can provide um, if you let's say you are writing data, you are exposing your data. If they are richer semantics, is much better. I mean, if you use the terms that are belong to a certain vocabulary, it's uh, what you are doing is more useful. But it's not something that you are have to do or it doesn't work. This is a strong suggestion. By the way, I just, uh, then I, I go on that. Thank you for the question. Thank you for completing this. They didn't. They didn't. They no. also they didn't. then they're blank. Oh, no, I admit, uh, before going on, I, I asked you to complete this, and because I want to have a few comments on that. Then I finish, but I don't have much more. Cosa faccio? Stoppo? No? Sì, sì. In the meantime, I go on, so no, I'm not very difficult concept. Uh, if you have a control vocabulary, that means that you have very, very well-known names and clear names that uh, uh, represent concepts, uh, you can arrange them in a hierarchy. And this becomes a taxonomy. So a taxonomy are names uh, organized as a, uh, as a tree. Mm -hmm. the, the, the term comes, dates back to Linnaeus' work on zoological and botanical classification. So it's something that is from the 18th century. Uh, but it's a term that uh, well represents uh, that the concepts uh, are, um, are organized only with two concepts, the father and the children and the child, okay? So one term is broader than the other or narrower on, on the other. This is just an example, this uh, uh, inspec uh, uh, taxonomy that has the objective of uh, indexing research, literature in physics and engineering, so it has a lot of um, categories that then, for example, electrical engineering and physics and they are divided at first level in, let's say, atomic and molecular physics, uh, uh, nuclear physics, and so on. And each of them is as a different, as more and more level of details, so that at the end, each um, literature is assigned a list of keywords that are taken from not only a controlled vocabulary, but on a taxonomy. That means that if something, of course, is about nuclear physics, it's also about physics, and the relationship has been, it's uh, inherited uh, from, uh, from this uh, tree structure. And um, the problem of the taxonomy, it's, they are more, they can express better than controlled vocabularies, but uh, they are limited only to kind of relationship between the, the nodes uh, that are parent, broader term, something more general, or child, which is something more specific or narrower. So, um, okay. This is a, again, examples taken from Linnaeus' work. So, the next step is uh, the thesaurus. The thesaurus is something, is a knowledge representation subject based classification technique that extends the taxonomy in sense that the subjects are arranged in a hierarchy. So the, the base is a hierarchy. 
which in our, let's say, the way we are used to reason, it's very well fixed in our mind. It's, for us, it's easier to, it's easy to reason about hierarchies. But here, there are more statements that can be done among different nodes of the hierarchy. Um, besides a broader term and narrower term, the one that already are in the hierarchy, in the taxonomy, we have other possibility of, um, let's say, of relationship. For example, scope node goes to a node that uh, gives extra information, for example, a string that explains the meaning of the term. Use and UF are one the opposite of the other. Use uh, means that uh, in case don't use this term but use another one, an alternative one. Used for is the preferred term for an for an ins an, a set uh, of terms. Then you can define the top term, so the ancestor, and a generically related term, something that is not. Uh, um, coded here, but uh, is um, is considered. This is an example of uh, thesaurus. Um, for example, here is written that uh, fiber uh, is a term, says where it comes from and what is the status, and is written use fibers. So this is a term that should not be preferably not be used and you and uh, it should be used fibers. So used for is the opposite fiber. Then there are some links to other kind of catalogs says that uh, the broader term is a specific case of materials and uh, the fibers comprehend uh, all this one, rope, scissor, jute, uh, and so on. And it's related to textile. And textiles, again, is used for the best term that substitute cloth, uh, fabrics, uh, and so on. And uh, these are all kind of textiles. And it's related, without saying, semantics of this relationship to fibers, materials, and so on. Uh, by the way, you, you will probably look at one. There is uh, one of the technology of the web is COS, that means Simple Knowledge Organization System that using RDF uh, data model express uh, thesauri. So this is an example of uh, thesaurus written, well, modeled in RDF uh, thanks to this uh, language at its course. Uh, um, you can see that the, like the model is the one of RDF, all our statement between two uh, URI. And uh, the labels as COS, uh, as, the, the, as the namespace, that means uh, that the name that you give to the links uh, is taken from the SCOS language. So, I don't know, are you going to make SCOS in the next time? Or Probably maybe? Time. No, no, no. Anyway, this is the idea that we can express uh, Tizauri in, uh, in, with this language. Uh, the, pa the, 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 the richest uh, representation is the ontology. The ontology, uh, the difference is that as open, open vocabularies, that means that you can add extra notes um, that are not completely set, and uh, the type of relationship are also open. So you are not restricted to the list of Tizawi uh, kind of relationship, but you can invent your own name for a relationship to express uh, uh, something. This is uh, just uh, a few, a couple of examples in which you say, you see that uh, uh, there are notes that express, um, say, concepts uh, or classes of concept, because in ontologies you can distinguish between the classes of an object, a person, subclasses but also on the instances of a classes. Uh, so I belong to the class of persons, and so on. And uh, here, for example, there is a, a legend that says, uh, uh, usually the most used uh, kind of relationship are is A, that is the taxonomy classical relationship. So an organ is an anatomical structure, of course. But uh, also something interesting is uh, the relationship that is called part of. 
for, for, uh, for example, the forebrain is a part of the brain and so on. Or here they, they decide to use another um, kind of relationship that develops from. So the brain develops from neural tube and so on, for infer uh, annotations and so on. This link inferred means that the ontology is uh, where you can do some reasoning and so reasoning means uh, uh, adding extra relationship among the existing terms. Mm. So this is the way. But, um, okay, so the next step will be to this romantically rich description, this problem has to do with uh, ontologies and uh, is what links with the reasoning. So adding extra information from what is already modeled. Uh, then, can you, can you give me your, uh, to, to uh, let's outline, from the one hand we want to outline how we are ambiguous in our normal way of writing and our reasoning. And when you want to do something formal, we want to expose data that are, let's say, readable for everybody, machine readable in a non-ambiguous way, probably we have, we have problems. For example, well, with family name and name, we don't have many problems such as email. For example, when I say student of, I was uh, intentionally ambiguous because what is a student of? What, what you are supposed to, to write? Well, some of you have written nothing <laughs> because it's not student, probably. No. Most of you have written Darwin, so the department. Some has written the name of his advisor. Some has written both, the Darwin and the name of the advisor. Some has written the name of the PhD course. So computer and control engineering. Commenta pura. Yes. Some has written PhD in computer. So different, uh, let's say, the same semantics, but written in a different way. And some have completely different semantics. Someone has interpreted as a department some has a PhD course, some uh, was uh, unsure and has written nothing, some has interpreted the person that is advising him. So let's say it's a, it's it's a simple yeah, question. It's, uh, this one, one of the reasons why we intentionally, uh, let's say, put you in a position where it was difficult to agree among you what to, what to write, because we, we, we handled this while she was speaking and so you couldn't talk to each other and say, what did you write here? Or how do you, how what do you mean? Or ask for clarification. Okay. So that exposes the, the, the uh, uh, this could be a, an easy question if given some more information about the question or some more information about the expected answer. So what is the, for example, except, ex ex expected vocabulary for the response? What are the allowed values of this? So, and this is just, one day. And so if we need to, to compare this, it would be very difficult to say that you are from the same group, from the same university, the same department, the same PhD course, because the information is in different ways. Hmm? And it will be easier question. The then we one. ask for competence, and here, of course, what is competence is clear. Everybody, uh, each of you have written what is uh, the uh, doing, uh, Internet of Things, uh, uh, ontologies that are mining. Why, why did you write more than one? Competence is a singular form. Because the space is what Right. So it's not explicit information there. Yeah. 
there was implicit information in the way you were asked that drove you towards interpreting that, uh, okay, confidence should be a typo, I should write more than one. So this uh, is a syntactic issue. So you interpret the syntax on the basis of, of, the, of the context instead of the explicit uh, information. And here again, there were different level of details in, which, in what you write. Uh, software engineers and develop, uh, software development, uh, mobile development, J Java, or the language, or Spark, or uh, web application, or the language, human computer interaction. So the, the level is uh, here, a vocabulary. Could, uh, but context was not specific, right? Context. Right. Yeah. Right. That's the issue. To outline how. Uh, 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 and people think if you wanted to ask really this question, what kind of choices should we leave to, an, to a person who should be able to answer? There are, for example, if, if probably when writing some paper, they already ask you to fill in some ATM classification categories, uh, or, and uh, this was, this, for example, ATM classification is one of the scenarios of the world developer, it's just to, to have a common uh, tagging uh, of topics. And how difficult it is to find a category that fits uh, what you are really doing in your paper. Mm -hmm. Because they are large categories and they tend to always lag behind the technologies. So the category was revised uh, probably three, four years ago, and a lot of topics that <laughs> we are working on to uh, today are not present in that uh, classification. So it's always Difficult to say, okay, it would be nice to have the perfect dictionary and people find the right spot and so that they can declare their own competence or skill set according to uh, well known categories. Actually, it's, it's more difficult than that. And this program, the same happens for uh, recruiters, so human resource departments that uh, want to recruit people or to uh, select people in internally to the, to the company. So what are the, the list of skills? It's not a list, uh, it's not a linear list, uh, because it's a tree, so a, a general skill that may uh, decompose in some more specific ones, uh, but what is the shape of this tree? Who decides that? So, that is it. For hobbies, uh, again, it's a very, very different. Uh, Different level, anything. Who plays the violin? I'm curious. Uh, I, we will, we will <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> so, so, some of the answers with the with the single word, others with sentences. I like to, I love that. So it's also the form, it's not just the content, it's also the syntax. Some are written to, some are written with music, some are going to data with uh, the instrument is playing. Um, game and the the second page. Okay. The last one was the most interesting, not because we are so curious, but our intention is to use this information in the other part of the course, like fil uh, rouge, you know, the connection, the vacations, in the sense that vacation allows us to reason about places, way of traveling, people, and so on. So we probably will use this for yeah. ontologies. Uh, try to model this. Model and that's yes, it. And that's so to have a starting point. base. In any case, uh, what you have written is, is very different. Some of you has written a place, distance from the, where they live in general. So you are living already this deep, very far, so you are written close place to for the vacation. So <laughs> there's so there's a the difference. It's a, fr people from Italy want to go to Hawaii, you want to go to Greece because you already come from very distance. So, or uh, someone wants to have a specific goal, visit the Great Wall, specific place. Uh, other is more general Greece. Uh, someone is around the world. It's very more the, the action than the, the, action. Than the destination. Someone said it want to go with your with family, so it's also relationship with people. It's interesting. Uh, someone wants. I to like. I love this one. Uh, yes. 
universe trip with NASA. Yeah. Going to the not even the moon, not even <laughs> someone uh, Hawaii and Australia, Australia are very wide lead. New Zealand also. <laughs> All over the world, places with relevant uh, the nature. Uh, uh, this is also interesting. The relevant the nature. So it's another aspect. Uh, it's not a place specific, but it was to a visit place with the property success. Success. So nature. You need to do some two or three steps uh, of, of reasoning, say, mm -hmm. uh, to, to understand whether that could be a destination for your location. Because you are saying. So we are saying, with whom, uh, where, uh, what are the characteristics of the, of the travel, so it should be something adventurous or relaxing, and what are the characteristics of the place. So these are all items that can describe the, the, the vacation. The vacation is much, a, is much, is a much more complex topic than competence from hobbies. Because it's something that's self-contained and it is, in, is described along uh, different dimensions. And each of these dimensions, uh, the location, the character of place, uh, the people that go there, that kind of activity, have their own description structure. Okay, so we'll take this we'll over. Can we take, but then we will give them back to you. But we will see if we can do something with this. In, uh, in, uh, in the examples and in the practical uh, lab exercises for, for this. Uh, just to finish, uh, next, next time uh, you will see RDF essentially yes. and RDFS also. Or yeah. 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 So uh, the, this, um, the syntax and more, more in detail on this direct exchange format and also on the schema that uh, allows you to work with taxonomy and start with the, toward the reasoning. Uh, the third one will be about um, linked data and SparkQL. So the other side. Then you will go, well, they are all, almost all are, let's say, we can see as um, independent um, lectures that compose the whole semantic web. Also because we have to, to change each other which uh, so anyway. And then after I don't remember the, the <laughs> anyway, the, the you will see so OWL reasoning and also some applications and so on. Remember to bring the laptop? Next time already? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Depends. Hopefully. Okay. So, uh, even for example to, to browse some data sets online. So that you don't have to write a Thousands of uh, of drivers can look what's there. Okay. Thank you for your company. <laughs>